What's going on guys, Maka here from Airsoft GI and we got a little bit of a different video here today. Today we're going to be taking a look at my personal Classic Army LX-13 and why I chose this one over the other options that were out there. So let's go to get into it. So externally, the LX-13 is a very good looking gun and that's a big reason why I chose it. I'm a big fan of the M-Lock route that they use up front. The gun itself doesn't weigh very much and that was a very big factor for me. I don't like carrying guns that are too overly heavy in case I do play with it for extended periods of time. So obviously this isn't how the gun is going to come stock. I added a few accessories here and there and changed some stuff out. Now currently it's set up for more like a three gun competition setting uh, with the short dot, pec, grip, and the new stock. I'm going to go over each individual attachment and why I went that route. So starting from the rear, the BAS stock was a very fantastic stock, don't get me wrong, and I have absolutely nothing against it. It was just a little bit of an off angle for me to rest my cheek on. It was still a very comfortable stock, but it wasn't as comfortable as I would like it to be. And for me personally, I want to make my guns perfect for when I go out and play. So I switched it out to the PTS EPGC, which is a very good stock. It's very easy to get on and off so I can swap the battery quickly if I have to. Moving forward a bit, we have the PEC-15, I believe this is a Bravo, and the scope is actually sitting just high enough so that it doesn't get in the way, even on the lowest setting. You might see a little bit of it, but it's not going to impede your ability in any way. Moving up a bit, we have the PTS Fortis Grip. This particular one is for M-Lock, so it's as low profile as possible, and it's very comfortable to hold. And then, of course, all the way at the front end, we do have the stock orange flash hider. Now, I didn't ditch this one because Classic Army does also make a QD flash hider that goes right on here. One I do want to run the suppressor. Now, the only time I'll ever actually put that on is for when I do swap the barrel out, but I haven't had the need to, so I probably will end up swapping this out for another flash hider, but I don't have any plans to do it this time. So up top we have a Raptor Arm short dot on a Lance Tactical mount. The short dot does come with scope rings, but they're very basic and actually really low profile, so I'm not too big on that. So I went ahead and got the Lance Tactical mount. I'll be sure to include the entire setup in the link below as well as all the other attachments. As for the barrel setup in here, you get a rotary saw hop-up unit and a 603 Type 1 barrel. And it is a phenomenal barrel too. I, I originally bought the gun with a Prometheus barrel. And I actually am finding better results with the stock barrel than I am with the Prometheus barrel. All right, so the last bit of furniture I actually didn't change on this gun was the pistol grip. Now this is Classic Army's newest pistol grip. And the biggest reason I left this on here is because it's actually a quick access motor grip. So it's very easy to get to. It's just a single button that you press and it opens right up. So as you guys know, one of the most common issues on any airsoft gun, whether it's a beginner gun or a high-end gun, is having your motor connectors fall off. Now it's not anything bad by any manufacturer by any means, but it's so much easier when you can get to it without any tools whatsoever. It's literally just the one latch comes right off and you have access to your motor. So if you want to do a quick motor swap, make sure your connectors are on there, or any other thing that might come from issues with the motor, it's very easy to get to with the Classic Army, and I'm very happy they went with that design. The ECS trigger system is very responsive and allows for a wide range of programmability. Now, when I say programmability, it's not like a, you know, semi three round burst, semi full, and that's it. You get five different fire modes with the gun, including semi-locking it. So there are some fields that will allow you to go to a higher FPS, if you do semi-lock the gun, you can do that all from the trigger. And it's not like something that you can do quietly or no one's gonna notice. It does beep, so you can't exactly cheat your way out of the system to get yourself a higher FPS. Speaking of higher FPSs, this actually does feature a true quick change spring guide. Now, majority of guns with the quick change spring guide, you do have to remove the gearbox from the gun. But on this particular one, all you have to do is take the buffer tube off and you have access to your spring guide right there. So it's very easy to swap the spring out so you can achieve that higher you know, semi-locked FPSs if you choose to do so. As of right now, for this foreseeable future, there's nothing that needs to be changed out. Maybe the flash adder, but that's just me. And overall, it is a fantastic, fantastic gun. Now, I'm kind of a klutz on the field. I've, you know, fallen a few times. My guns have taken a beating, as you guys can see right here. That wasn't my proudest moment. But the gun held up just fine. And as far as, you know, durability goes, the, the gun hasn't skipped a beat since I've gotten the gun. And I am very, very satisfied with how it's held up, the performance of it, consistency of it. And this is still 100% stock. Um, the only thing I've changed are the externals on the gun and I don't plan on changing anything out in the future unless I absolutely have to. Let me know down in the comment section below what your current favorite build is. Uh, what have you done to it? What do you plan on doing with it? How is it dressed up? I'm really looking forward to hearing all of that down below. As always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe as well as hit the notifications icon to be notified anytime we upload brand new content here on YouTube. My name is Michael, this has been GITV. I'll see you on the next one.